What's up, everybody, and welcome to our Game of the Year discussion. I'm Kevin McManus. With me, I have Nick Hassel. Hello. Kellen Willard. And as always, we're going to be doing our own thing, defining our own terms for what Game of the Year means to us. We're not going to be doing some sort of, you know, voting system where one thing is supreme to all or whatever. We'll we just kind of are, just for ourselves. One yeah, game. just for ourselves. <laughs> you know, um, I personally am doing a top 10 list, and I'll explain my rules for how that happened. Last year, you did like a battle royale of all these games oh, going yeah. at it. And, that would have uh, helped this year a little there, bit. Yeah, there is one left standing. 2017. Kellen wasn't was, uh, on that episode. <laughs> I just always do a top five, except for the year I wasn't here. But yeah. If I had to do like two through 32 again, then mm-hmm. yeah, I would have to use that system because A, it was cool, and B, <laughs> it was entertaining. Aside from one clear winner for me, like everything else is just kind of like, I can make a case for that and that and that. Ooh, this is good too. And then it's just like I'm 20 that's, games in. That's how I feel this year, um, particularly with like my top four. Yeah. I. There's different aspects of it where I'm like, well, I like this so much more than this, and I like this so much more than this, and then it's like, now compare all that, and I'm like, I don't know, I'm just yeah, gonna put these. I, these were all different. Yeah. If I had to yeah. do two through ten, it was sort of like our uh, favorite games of all time video, where if you asked me on a different day, I would rearrange it somehow. So, hmm. so um, I guess let's start by just going and saying how we're gonna do it. Okay. Mine is a top ten list. I also have just kind of shout outs that I'm going to do. I'm not going to really talk about them in depth. Um, my, I guess, the things that you have to have was the game had to come out this year originally, basically, um, at least in English in America uh, for the first time this year. And I put that caveat because once I wanted to have uh, Final Fantasy Type Zero on my list, but it was already released in Japan years ago. And I was like, well... I'll tweak my own uh-huh. rules. And this year, I am tweaking my own rules again. Um, I'm going to start letting games of service onto my list. I finally see the light. I understand. I also understand that most people only play either like two games of service, and that's all they play, or they play one, and then they play other video games. Yeah. Um, and now with the introduction of seasons and how in-depth people are getting with seasons, how many changes and the content they're adding and doing all this stuff with it, uh, I don't feel bad saying that a season of something was the best this year. You you're, know? you're just making room for League of Legends. Yeah, that's it. Like, you know, a TV show comes out and they're, they had a really good season three. I think that it's totally reasonable to say that that was the best, you know, TV show of the year was that season of that That's TV fair. show. That's fair. Like so. when I, uh, I always do my own like separate list outside of the show that it includes music, um, movies, shows, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I do t- like I specify because one season can suck of something, but this yeah. one's just like, oh man, you got to watch this. So that's fair. Um, other than that, yeah, uh, I have a couple games that I'm going to talk about that I just didn't get far enough into. I don't feel comfortable like ranking them, and I'll go over them soon, but that's basically how I did my list. Other than that, it's a personal list. It's not the best game. It is basically favorite um, yep. is the easiest way to summarize it, I guess. So that's how my list is going to work, and I have a top ten. I think I said that three times, but just so you Do know. Do you have a top ten? It's a top ten. Oh, a top there's ten. ten. There is ten oh, games yeah. on the list. And top. honorable mentions. Uh, my top, yes. Okay. Um, I have five this time. No crazy mathematical formulas to get there. We're not splitting the atom um, to figure out his favorite game. Yeah. <laughs> um, not beating cancer to figure it out. Just uh, just five, five games because I could probably do 30 and feel just as good, I guess. But um, also... I will do a honorable mention because I'm just sticking very rigid to the it had to have come out this year uh, formula. Um, be released first time, whatever. All sure. that. So that being said, that's it for me. Nice yeah. and simple. For yeah. once. Mine's just five favorite games that released this year, basically. No games of service. Um, I had to play at least a little bit of it or enough of it to get a feel for it. Like the game I'm leaving off, I probably wouldn't if I'd played more of it. But Right. Yeah, I, I have that feeling right now. Yeah, like there's one. I'm only about two hours into it. I'm like, I, I, that's Actually, not enough games. to justify it, but I do really like it. So, Actually, three games. Good God. It just keeps getting worse. <laughs> Shout outs to past Nick, who decided at the start of the year making a game journal of what did I buy, <laughs> what did I play, and what did I beat. Uh, because that helped a yeah, lot. Yeah, shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I went on releases.com and went through every game yeah. that came out this year. And like, even then, I finished the list and I was like, oh, this came out this year. And I, I, I mean, even games like Dragon Ball, I was like, oh, yeah, that was this year. So it was a, felt like a long year for games where it felt like 2017 was like nothing, 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 March. 
um, and then nothing for a while, and then like fall, winter, and then it's over. This one's just kind of drug out. So how do we want to do this? Do we want to do like my 10, 9, and then yours 5s, and then my 8, 7? Just get down to 5, and then we can you go. You want me to yeah. just cast this whole yeah, thing you for a while? just talk for a bit. You said you weren't going to talk much. Uh, you do your thing. Yeah, I'll keep the, the ones on the bottom a little shorter because of you guys did top fives. Uh, first off, I want to get the Mega Man out of the way. Just I want to uh, give a shout out to <laughs> games that I wished I played or I wish I played more of. So that's is Celeste, which I'm going to be starting in January. Far Cry 5, which um, I'm glad I saw the ending of at the Game Awards. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> But I think I might have enjoyed that game. It probably these are basically games that I feel like could be in the ten, nine, eight slots on my list. Uh, Spider Man. Everybody talks about the story being the main like thing in that game, and I just wasn't deep enough into the story to get that. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, same thing. Though I am enjoying that game quite a bit, and I definitely could see that being on my list. Um, and Pokemon Let's Go, I'm having fun with. It's a little bit childish still. I still get that vibe. But once again, I also am like, I gotta find the Mr. Mime. I gotta find the Gengar. Where are these things? You know, it, it's a very. If you very need help with that, habit. let me know. Um, I went kind of uh, batshit crazy on that game. So. Oh, and then honorable mentions that uh, these are. Uh, or honorable exclusions, I guess. These are games that couldn't be on the list because they're technically remakes, and I don't put remakes on my list, and that is Shadow of the Colossus, which would have been probably number one, uh, Spyro Reignited Tr- Trilogy, and Katamari, Katamari Damacy Reroll. Um, Good so, year for remakes. Yeah, I wanted to throw yeah. those on Next my year, list. even better. So with that said, like I said, I'm going to go fairly quickly over these five so that we can kind of catch up to each other. My number 10 is... Mega Man 11. Good Yay. job. You did. Hey, we knew. Um, so this prime. felt like a natural evolution of the Mega Man form- formula. I really liked the art style. I, the gameplay was perfectly brought into HD, which is something you don't really think about. You're taking a screen that's this big, and your movement's a certain speed, and your bullets go a certain speed, and everything moves a certain speed, and then you're saying, okay, well, now the TV's this big. And that changes a lot of of the game. You have to rework the entire game. I think they did a great job doing that. The new mechanics that they added were interesting. Um, I think they weren't... I wish there was more areas where they kind of forced you to use them so that you could understand their utility because they are super useful. But half my first playthrough, I just wasn't using them because I was like, I don't know why I would use these. And then when I watch speedrunners and I'm like, oh... You can use these constantly, and they're very helpful. And that is the ability to slow down time, which you can use just to like basically offset like an enemy pattern to get past a section really quickly, or power up your weapons, which allow you to do certain things like break obstacles that are don't look breakable at all, or just hit enemies that are in weird spots because if you have a special weapon, it actually changes what the special weapon does, and it might shoot at a different trajectory and hit something that you wouldn't have been able to hit normally. All this stuff, like a lot of Mega Man games, watching the speedruns really got me, uh, made me appreciate the game more. Um, I think it is a great entry point for the game. They had a lot of, um, like, if you want to play on easy and you're not very good, here's a lot of lives and a lot of checkpoints and a lot of continues. They did that system. And they're also like, also, if you don't want to be able to buy stuff and or upgrade and you want to play it on, I think it's called superhero mode and go through it, you can do that. And the bosses have new attacks and all this stuff. Um, so real good entry. I'm excited. I, this set the stage for Mega Man 12, and I think we will see Mega Man 12 fairly soon. Um, excited to see that. Mega Man 11. Good job. You did it. You didn't, you didn't do a bad. Number nine is Octopath Traveler, um, which is a game I loved the art style of ever since I first saw it, and I loved the music way more when I started playing it. It is very classic JRPG. Their battle system was really interesting, the way they had their um, ability to kind of chain your attacks together, like save them up in, in a bank and then spend them all to do more powerful attacks. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that. The multiple characters were really cool. I wish that they intertwined a little bit more, and it was more of a you know, overarching story with them. But that being said, I think Octopath 2, once again, I think the set up, an, I, it sold really well. It did really well. I think we're going to see Octopath 2, and I think they can take all this feedback into that, however they want to do it, whether if they want to use, you know, just eight new characters or however they want to go about that. Uh, really enjoyed it. Just a fun, it made grinding fun, which is hard to do in JRPGs. That's kind of the big problem with JRPGs. And putting it on a portable 
and making this fun, satisfying combat with all the, even just like the hit noises and the slashes and the, the vibration and the HD rumble of the Joy-Cons HD was, rumble. was fantastic. So Octopath Traveler, my number nine. Made you happy to see kitties too on your yeah, screen. That's, that's <laughs> very true. Number eight is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, they kind of went deeper into the fighting game side of it with this and steered a little bit away from the more party side of it, which I didn't like at all until it clicked for me, which was actually playing on their shitty online service um, that it started to click. I started winning some online matches, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm understanding. I, I went and watched a video that was the differences between the Wii U version and this one, and like, and there's just like one-second stuns after you do certain attacks and this stuff, and I'm like, oh, okay. Once, once I learned all that, it was cool, but the game doesn't teach you that stuff, yeah. so you've got to kind of go to outside resources. But once I figured that out, and I was like, okay, now I'm invested in this game. Now I'm getting it. It has the best classic mode of any of the Smash Brothers. It's really awesome. Individual, every character has their own individual classic mode set up for them with their own individual bosses. And there's kind of like joke bosses and stuff that will play off of their own games, which is really cool. They all have their own like end game boss, which I thought was really neat. Um, they do some neat things like let you pick your stage before your characters. So you can pick a small arena that doesn't have a lot of platforming and then you can pick Little Mac and feel pretty safe about that as opposed to before where people are like, oh, I'll play Little Mac and then they're like, auto-scroll level. And like, oh, right, you know. Um, so I like that. Pokey floats. Uh, and then I love the stage morph. I think that's the best thing that they added to the game. The ability to just keep swapping between two stages at random intervals uh, was really fantastic and that roster is huge and I'm super excited for the DLC. So Smash Brothers Ultimate, my number eight. Number seven, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Uh, this is one of my favorite fighting games since Tekken 7, I guess. Um, I really, really like the mechanics. I love the comeback mechanic of the more you used your partner in the fight when the partner dies, your last guy that's left is more powerful based on you know how often you kind of comboed together. I thought that that was really neat. The comeback mechanic was super strong, but you had to earn it. It gives you chip damage. It gives you health regeneration. It gives you meter regeneration. Like, it gives you all this stuff to kind of make you feel overpowered for like 30 seconds to try and get that win. And it left to, it, it leaves you with a lot of these like awesome comeback matches where it's like, oh, there's no way I'm going to win. And then you do. And it's just a feel good moment. The um, crossover of the IPs that they have and then the fact that it seems like they're adding more IPs or at least one more IP is awesome. Um, and I really liked the introduction of the Ruby characters into it. And they looked really good and played really, really well. And having their music and everything is all the music in the game is really great. They did really yep. good remixes for everything. Um, and I'm excited for the DLC for this game, for more DLC for it, to see what we get. I'm sad that it got overshadowed by Dragon Ball a bit. It sure did. Um, but it, yeah. it sure, sure did. It got me to watch Ruby, though. Um, but, that's true. Uh, it got me to watch Ruby as well. But since Dragon Ball hasn't been being played in tournaments anymore, then uh, maybe yeah, people that, like Blaze yeah, Blue more. <laughs> so weird. Um, and then finally, my number six is Fortnite, specifically Season 5, which is the World's Collide season, which came out on July 12th. This was my favorite season of the game overall. It was the one where they actually started um, playing with things in real life and in the game. So, for instance, somebody went into the desert and found a huge hamburger uh, sign. And when you went into the game, the giant hamburger was gone from the game when somebody found that in real life. And they're, they're having this whole like real life versus llamas started appearing in phone booths and all this stuff. Um, so that was a really cool way to advertise it. And then the gameplay uh, that it added was the rifts, which basically you walked into one of them and it shot you to the top of the map and you could re-glide back down, which were super exciting because they could be used defensively, they could be used offensively. Uh, it really mixed up the gameplay. Also, it added the golf carts for the first time. They added vehicles with this, and they were vehicles that I really enjoyed because they were just basic transportation. There weren't anything crazy. Uh, they started getting crazy later. Later, They added emotes that were actual other games. So they added like basketball and golf and you could actually just hit golf balls into the at the golf course or basketballs and there was challenges to like sink a basket from different distances. They added the first binome into the game which was um, a desert and they added paradise and half or a 
quarter of the map became a desert, and that was really cool. Um, and now they've been adding on to that. There's like a snow area now, and it's slowly filling itself out, but this was the first one to do that. And they also added uh, grappling hooks in this one, which is an item that I really like, which also had its own limited time game mode that was really fun, where you had to steal a llama and get to a, and escape with it. It was basically a capture the flag, and it's still my favorite game mode that they've made. Um, and it also introduced, or I don't know if it introduced, but it also had leveling up outfits where you would buy the battle pass and you get a base outfit and every couple of levels it would get like lightning and then it'd get a mask and you could customize it. That's one of my favorite um, things from League. So. The old Pulse well, Fire skin. Pulse Fire or when they added, I don't know if you've seen when they added chromas Mm-mm. where you can recolor skins in Ooh. League now. But I like that. Yeah, especially games that, you know, like that level system matters. So Yeah. That's cool. So anyway. Uh, Fortnite Season 5, that was my favorite of the Fortnite seasons. And, of course, it did the live events, which I love so much, where they're just like, if you're here at this time, you get to see this rocket come and crash the through the thing or this cube that's moving around and then it sinks into the lake and then the lake is bouncy for one week and then it's not bouncy anymore and all the stuff. They, they I like that they do that. So, anyway, those are my uh, 10 through 6. I've been talking a lot. I'll pass it to Kellen to give his number 5. So I can drink this water. <laughs> I just like seeing Thanos break dance in Fortnite. That's the only thing I've ever cared about in that game. That's perfectly fair. <laughs> I think I played the cops and robbers ones. You did. You. We played it together. It was not bad. That's the last time I played that game. Mm. Uh, number five, God of War. Um, I think I'm about. I I did not finish this game, but really need to. Uh, I'm like 15 hours into it. Yeah. Um, the gameplay is incredibly solid. Yep. That story is very good so far, and that game is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it really um, is. It made me mad because I tried to fight a Valkyrie, and I was not high enough to fight the Valkyrie, and she kicked the shit out of me. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not playing this anymore. <laughs> no, no, I'll go back to it, but um, the game is very good, and I'm looking forward, to, <laughs> looking forward to finishing it. Oh, I'm not fucking with the Valkyrie I anymore. was about to say, that Valkyrie isn't getting any easier. <laughs> no, I'm not fucking with that thing anymore. But yeah, I, I really need to finish it, but that game's very good. And I see all the hype behind it, and I'm glad I finally got to it, because I was very late. The it. the crazy thing, talking about the story and you not finishing it, is it just gets better. It's very like, good. Like, the story just keeps getting like better. Like, it started off pretty cool, and then you start moving around. It just it, It's gotten better and better so far. Yeah. It's one of the rare games that I don't think goes down. It just goes... There's not a dip anywhere. And then it ends. And you're like, that was really satisfying. Unless you run into a Valkyrie, and you get all excited. <laughs> I ran into the sure. Valkyrie. I fought my first Valkyrie, too. Um... And I was like, I'm going to beat this thing. I fought it for like an hour. And I was like, I'm walking away. <laughs> I was really excited. Like, I can finally open this door. What's back here? Ooh, a Valkyrie. Fuck this. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah, got a warm. Some doors are better left closed. I know that now. Um, number five for me, and this is thank God for impulse buys uh, around Steam holidays and whatnot. Um, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Uh, usually about once a year, I get my classic RPG on. Uh, I didn't think this would happen after the grind of open world games the year, 2018. Um, but somehow I still managed to squeak out another 40 or 50 hours of my life for this. Um, it's the second game that came out for Pillars of Eternity. Um, and basically it's a lot like Divinity, um, that I talked about last year is the classic formula of um, text-based. There's a lot more dialogue. I think you kind of get pinged too much nowadays if you don't have dialogue in your game, but it's very narrated. It's very classic. uh, Yeah. Um, Walk up to a character, talk, and, you know, you can get into a disagreement and fight. You can settle things, you know, whatever. There's stats behind everything. This one, uh, as opposed to Divinity and opposed to... Um, a lot of the older style games that this comes from um, is very deep into the Dungeons and Dragons aspect of uh, this type of game. So it's the same classes that you get to choose from. It's the same, like you almost feel a dice roll behind everything you do. Um, It's the entire cast of Critical Role who voices this game. Um, So that doesn't hurt um, that connection, I guess. Um, and just everything you do just feels a lot more Dungeons and Dragons like than it does just tabletop classic RPG, um, you know, in a game. Um, so it's really cool to have all that real world influence of, hey, you know, these are some streams I watch, uh, some people I watch every week. 
um, on top of, this is a very near and dear genre to me, and on top of just like, it always, it scratches that yearly itch too. So um, a lot of content came out with this. I think they've had three or four expansions already in one year. Um, so that's good. A um, lot of customization, obviously, in this type of game. So I'm really glad that anytime I get to just mold my own perfect version of whatever I had in mind, um, I didn't get to play Dungeons and Dragons this year like I wanted to. Um, so that filled another kind of void, I guess, is that uh, for a little bit throughout the year, you know, I really just wanted to play actual Dungeons and Dragons. So this scratched that itch too. So really just fucking nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, just all around. Did a bunch of great things, and number five. And now they're owned by Microsoft, right? I think so. Yeah, Obsidian. My number five. Welcome to the lovely place that is PlayStation VR. We're talking Beat Saber. Um, so Beat Saber is just a pure, fun, adrenaline-driven video game. It is Guitar Hero style. It is quite the workout. Um, basically you have a blue lightsaber, a red lightsaber, and they act like lightsabers. They buzz and vibrate in your hand. When you cling them together, they have like a sharp vibration feedback. The feedback is so good. And that's really what does like what makes this game incredible. And then, yeah, the notes just come at you. They have a direction. You slice them in that direction and you get graded on how clean of a down the middle slice you did. Um, they'll be coming at you. Some of them you'll need to slice diagonally. Some are up and down. Sometimes they get cute, and as they're coming at you, the red and the blue switch, and then you feel stupid, and you <laughs> you got to cross over your arms. Uh, you bump it up to hard mode. You have walls coming at you that you have to dodge while you're still slashing other things. The game is... I watched it, and I was like, that looks like fun. Then somebody puts it on, and you watch the TV, and you're like, this looks boring. And then you put on the headset, and you're like, Oh, this is really good. Like, really good. Arguably the most immersive, like, world. Like, the visuals are just so crisp in this. And I imagine it's because there's not a lot going on. They're so crisp. Um, I, I can't even explain. It looks so good. Uh, anyway, getting your workout, you're doing your drumming, things coming at you, you're ducking, you're slicing things while you're down below. I punched my bed real hard. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it was... It was an experience, definitely a must-play VR game. Um, I The music's really good. really enjoy the tracks that they have. I hope they work out a way for PlayStation specifically to either have a bunch of DLC packs, which they've already added music. Turns into Rock Band. Yeah, just like adding oh, yeah. songs to it. I'm not um, going down that road again. <laughs> why not? But 600 songs later. <laughs> a really, really incredible, unique VR game that would only work in VR. Uh, Beat Saber. Yeah. Awesome. Both it has the League of Legends song in it. It does, and I played it on hard, and it was hard. <laughs> and then I, I beat it, and As then I advertised. did it. I did it on expert, and I got like I was okay for the first like thirty seconds, and then they started like being cute, where you have to keep using your same hand over and again to keep hitting all these different directions, and then they throw a different one at you, and you're like, ah! <laughs> and then I just shut it off. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> it was just done. Yeah. You mess up only a couple things and you fail. Like, you fail really fast in that game. Poor Kevin. Mm -hmm. uh, number four. Red Dead Redemption 2. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I actually really like this game and I like the story of it a lot. But I haven't finished it yet because I keep getting sidetracked in this game because there's a lot of shit to do. There sure is. Yes. Uh, I think this map they made for this game was perfect. Like, it is awesome. It's really well laid out. I like all the different stuff to do. Like, it depends on where you're at, what you can do. Like, if you're up in the wintry part of the map in the mountains, there's different hunting things to do. The cities are all different. Um, there's the one, like, really more modern city. It almost feels like a different game when you're there. Um, I like all of the characters that they've got so far. Um, the gunplay. Big band of idiots. The big, exactly. It's just a big bunch of idiots who don't really want to live in a city. They're just kind of moseying around because they're wanted for killing a lot of things <laughs> and robbing a lot of things and breaking into places too quickly <laughs> well <laughs> sometimes you just whoa gotta, partner sometimes you just <laughs> got to break the door because you really need to go pay your own bounty off 
Um, the game's really well made because most Rockstar games are. Yeah. It, the polish on it's very good. I just there's just a lot to do in the game. I haven't tried the online yet, but I've heard good things about it. But I heard it's, I heard it's more just just more Grand Theft Auto, but yeah, GTA it, it adds game. Grand Theft Auto into it. It's got a whole story mode, like the online mm-hmm. has yeah, its own story. I haven't, I haven't tried that yet. But yeah, that's yeah, you just get you're like I'm gonna go do a mission, and then somebody hog ties you, and you, <laughs> you're tied up on the back <laughs> of a horse. But yeah, the single player is great. Uh, I've played a lot of it. Just every now and then I fire up the game because I just feel like going to hunt something. I've just been three hours trying to track something down. There's just a lot to do. I think it's really well made. Oh, yeah. Hardy R2. Fell off the screen. Oh, number four. The year of sequels. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I, if you had told me, I guess, at the start of this year, or I guess when the leak happened uh, right before E3, the keychain, um, that... This would even be remotely towards the top of my list. I would have laughed at you and said mean things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I liked so a normal I liked Assassin's Creed's uh, re-emergence, I guess, back into the gaming scene after their little break. Um, I liked their uh, little adventure in Egypt that they took me through, but it wasn't anywhere like at the top of the pile as far as Game of the Year contenders or anything like that. It was just really fun, and it was a welcome break and a nice welcome back from that break. But um, so I thought, you know, the uh, getting tired of Assassin's Creed, I thought that would happen again. Um, But luckily, uh, when they announced the game, even though, like I said, it was leaked, but they didn't leak the part about there would be cool characters for you to choose between uh, as your main character. Um so this was the first time they split off and let you choose if you want to be male or female. Um, obviously, the correct choice is female for this game because I think she, the woman who played um, her, who I can't remember. Cassandra. To, yeah. Uh, I can't remember to, how to pronounce the actual actress's name. but All I got is Cassandra. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Not Cassandra trying. was one of my favorite characters all year. Um, I know a lot of that, too has um, basically my choices pushed into it because they did adopt a dialogue system in the game too. So you can choose if you want to be snarky. It's a good snarky, dialogue system. I like it. If you want to be snarky or if you want to be serious or whatever. Um, so it's hard to say this character is awesome because it's basically like your representation of them. But um, I liked basically every minute she's on screen, like not in combat, but like when there's talking or like the story's actually unfolding. I mean, like every single second she's on the screen, I'm just like... She's amazing. I love her. Um, Did you see the stat that only like 30% of people played as her? Really? Mm-hmm. They must be the ones that have internet. Because <laughs> I see everyone <laughs> talking about Cassandra. I've heard a lot more about her than I have. Him, oh, me so. too. But yeah, they released the stats. And I would have said more than maybe, double. I would have thought 60-40. I would have said 90-10 in her favor. <laughs> But um, And I'm usually one who kind of sides with the male in most of the games like that, especially Mass Effect, any of the dialogue-heavy games. Like, if I'm making my character, it just makes sense for me to be the dude uh, if I'm trying to role-play, I guess. But fuck the other guy. <laughs> Cassandra's where it's at. Um, so not only just her character and the story, I also like the setting uh, way more than Ancient Egypt. Um, if they make a Norse game or something like that, That'll probably be my favorite one, but this was close. Uh, them making it ancient Greece, um, as far as historical settings for me, it's my favorite one that they've done so far. Um, I liked it too because of the big detraction from Assassin's Creed. It's hard to get exhausted over a game if it just breaks away completely. Like I've beaten the game, and this isn't really spoilery, um, but like it's just not an Assassin's Creed game. They could have just it, named it's it It's a little weird, yeah. They and a lot of people hold that against it. Like, you're not... Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm not that deep into the game, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Is it like you have... Like, in the old Assassin's Creed games, you get, like, a main villain target, mm-hmm. and you go assassinate yeah. that target. That's, that is the game. Well, yeah, do you and, do that and in like this? The, and like the old <laughs> games, too, you're just like... Either you start off an assassin or like, hey, this guy way back in your genealogy. And then you're like, oh, I must inherit the blade. And then you like become the assassin. Like this game is just Odyssey. Or in four, you just kill an assassin. Yeah. And you're like, these clothes are cool. <laughs> <laughs> these are neat. Uh, this them. game is just Odyssey. Uh, I don't know if they just wanted to use Assassin's Creed to help sell it. Um, I don't really know where it connects with any other game. 
Um, but it is what it is. They detracted from it, so that threat of being exhausted from it just went away. So I was able to enjoy it. And I think there was that report early in the year, like, oh, hour 15, it really kicks up into high gear. And I was like, I love this game like five hours in. And I'm enjoying it. Better. Yeah. Um, the, it feels better. The other major complaints that I've had about Assassin's Creed games is that like one button does 30 things, and I don't run into that quite as much anymore. I, yeah, it's still, still it that. still happens, but... Um, in combat, particularly. Yeah. Um, but they're getting better and better with each installment, I guess, if, if I'm still able to call this an Assassin's Creed game. Um, but yeah, really loved it. Um, would like more content for it, I guess, and I'm sure I'll get it. Yeah, I think they plan to support it all next year. So I'm interested to see where this franchise goes because I don't really consider this an Assassin's Creed game anymore. So I don't know if that's their idea of not releasing a yearly Assassin's Creed. Is They did take a year off. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if they'll keep changing oh, yeah. like the core gameplay <laughs> of the games and just being like, it's Assassin's Creed, but it's not. So who knows? A lot of, a lot of good things. Anytime you had a dialogue system, more character customization, and uh, I guess cool options to choose between male and female characters and making them interact, it's not like the other person just goes away and dis- yeah, disappears. Yeah. They become like a background part of the story. Right. All right. They're both still in the world. Number four, Astrobot Rescue Mission, another PSVR game. Uh, so this, some people say in the Mario of the PSVR, I disagree. This is the Crash Bandicoot. This is the, you're going down what is basically a hallway. It's a wide open hallway, but you're going down what is basically a hallway and they use every VR trick in the book that they could think of to make it awesome and interesting, whether it be your characters above you, whether one of my favorite levels, you're in the water and you have a little uh, life raft that you're in and waves keep coming. And every time there's a wave, it actually goes over and like hits you and it leaves your, your screen all watery and, and coated. Um, this is, you know, you just go from the start of the level to the end of the level. You collect coins, you collect robots, but it, it plays like a Crash Bandicoot game, not like a Mario game. So I do want to say that. But it uses everything in such a good way. Once again, the controller vibration is key. It tells you everything. Um, You have to physically use it in the world to, like, unlock doors and things. And when it clicks, you feel that click. It goes, and you feel it. And then as it's doing its unlocking mechanisms, you can feel all that happening in the controller. And you get all these weapons, like shurikens to throw from the controller, or a grappling hook, or whatever it may be. They play with scale with levels where there's creatures who you're the size of their eyeball and they like come down and they talk to you and they go back up and your little characters running around while that giant thing is trying to help you out the boss fights are some of the best boss fights that i've done in a platforming game um it's the typical like you know hit them three times and and you got them type thing but just the way that they make you use your character your controller and your uh awareness of where you are is really really neat um, the music's fantastic. The visuals are super bright and colorful. And it, this is what I've wanted from VR. I've been talking about make third person VR games. That is the, like, that is amazing. And people keep trying to do these first per- person games where things jump out at you and go boo. But first person makes you feel one, very vulnerable and not want to play. Even in non horror games, things spook you in, in first person VR. Um, all you need is a person's face way too close to you that you weren't looking at. And then you look and you're like, oh my God, well, even if it's a cartoon dude, it's scary. Um, you can't get away. Whereas when you're kind of this like God camera type thing and you're just controlling the action more like a Moss or Astrobot, uh, I think it works a lot better. And I think this game did it incredibly well. Um, and I'd like to see a sequel. I'd like to see it, but Astrobot rescue. Mission. I'd like to think they heard me uh, that first night I was over here when you like first got it, mm-hmm. and I played the demo and I was like, yeah, they had a demo. I was like, tech demo for it. I was like, make this a full game, and I'm in. And then there went, it is. Went to play everything else. <laughs> Good job. Where am I at? Number three. Yeah. Uh, Marvel's Spider Man mm. for the PS4. Um, makes you feel like Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> 
just for you, Kevin. Um, the game's really well made because, again, another studio that always makes really well, really well made games. Um, the story we were talking about this earlier. The story kind of surprises you because it's really well done. Also, yeah, the way they mingle all of his his, his villains together and. Yeah, it's an unfortunate I didn't get uh, that deep in to see all of that unfold because I know that would be what gets it onto my list, you know. It's very neat. It's very fun to watch and participate in. Um, it, in typical open world city games, there's all sorts of crap to collect. Oh, my God. <laughs> there's stuff everywhere. And at first, it's a little overwhelming. Then you're like, oh, the city's broken up into blocks and everything's in its own section. So I can just go section by. I can pick up all my stuff. They get you different things. Like, I did one first because it unlocked the new suit form that I liked. I think it was the black cat stuff I did. Yeah, it's just, it's really well done. And I I already know the Marvel Universe fairly well and Spider-Man's villains and stuff like that. And they did a really good representation of them. The fights are really well made. All of his abilities are fun to use. And there's unique ways to play with him. If you want to be more melee combative, you can. If you want to use his webs, you can. Like, it's it's a really well done game. It happens to have a setting I really like, which is Marvel Universe. So yeah, Spider Man. Marvel Spider Man. Marvel Spider Man. Sold incredibly well. Best selling uh PlayStation game. Like including It's a little surprising, but at the same time yeah, a lot it's of like people, the best people selling exclusive Spider-Man. PlayStation yeah. game, which is crazy because that includes like Grand Theft Auto three on the PlayStation Two and stuff like that. And it's the best-selling superhero game, but that's not super surprising. Oh, yeah, that's I also want to talk about Spider-Man for number three. Fair enough. Um, on top of what Kellen said, because he's right on all counts for the first time in his life. Um, How's it feel? <laughs> I accept this honor. <laughs> universe that I love, a uh, character that I love. I don't know where I would rank Spider-Man, but he's way up there for me, especially as of late where we're getting cool movies. Um, cool comic book like movies and now a cool game like it's all coming full circle um, so that's cool the easter eggs in this game are everywhere and they're amazing um, I really clicked with this Peter Parker's style of humor uh, it's, oh, not, yeah, he's great. it's not too obnoxious uh, where it's like borderline Deadpool and you're like alright um, that's enough and it's not too rigid where it's just like Ultimate Spider-Man movies or something like that. Um, so it hit a nice stride, I think, as far as the different takes on all of the characters. I really enjoyed all of them. Um, the only negatives I even had to say about the game are just the parts where I didn't play a Spider-Man. Uh, that's it. Um, whether it's like a story thing that just went on for too long that wasn't Spider-Man heavy or a gameplay section that they yeah. just have to do for some odd reason. So the parts um, that you didn't like were where you didn't feel like, like Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but everything else from the background characters to the villains to the sidekicks to the, you know, whatever main portions of the game done really well. I liked, um, you sort of mentioned it, like different blocks and suburbs, I guess, of New York all had like their own identity, I guess. So you could tell even without press and start and looking at the map kind of where you were at um just and i'm not new york's biggest uh expert i guess but i could kind of finagle my way around the city just um just by going oh yeah well i know where that landmark's at so i need to go this way um you did mention a ton of grinding that you have to do in the game but it was actual good grinding because they rewarded you mostly for all of it so you at least if you didn't get something immediately after that you built up credit whether it was like 10 of these and you can buy this or this find enough backpacks and yeah you, get, you know it's all worth um, the, the grind is worth it so the this was the only game of the year that i platinumed as far as ps4 goes i really don't ever chase that even though even games like persona 5 where the platinum is just like right there yeah all you're, to do is you're play so again. close um but i don't know it just don't have time to do that when you're playing 40 hour games 12 times a year um but this i i will say this was the game that got me to my exhaustion point because once i hit that 100 percent after doing every single thing in every single block of new york i was just like this is enough <laughs> i need to stop 100 percent in games um, but it was a good one to go out on i guess uh, sunset 
sort of game. But uh, yeah, just everything top to bottom about the game, it felt really, really good. The controls were my biggest concern, and it clicked. Um, after, well, some other games that I may have mentioned or will mention, um, there was a learning curve. And after I got over that and the frustration of that, then it was just smooth sailing. So you talk about your gets gets more fun as you go. This was the definition of that for me. So interesting. Number three, Detroit become human. Um, this is another one of those, and I always have one on my list somewhere where I just didn't think I would like the game that much because I don't like the subject matter. Um, last year I felt like that for near, and then I played near, and I was like, oh, I'm completely wrong, and this <laughs> is incredible. And uh, Detroit for a while was, you know, teetering in the two and one spot. Like I was trying to figure out exactly where I wanted it. I really, really liked this game. Uh, the choices felt like they actually mattered and actually impacted things quite heavily, even little things or huge events, um, which in some story-based games you just feel like, oh, well, now when they get to this part and they kill the character, my person's going to be sad or my person's going to be happy, like stuff like that. Like This one actually felt like this person will now put their life on the line for me because this happened. Um, They also... (laughs) <laughs> they also did something interesting where each character kind of played differently, but uh, particularly with Connors, they were uh, there was a lot of like timed missions that really made you panic and gave mm-hmm. you anxiety while you're playing the game because you see this percentage of uh, the odds you have that you're going to complete it, and it just starts dropping. It, just, it and never yeah. goes up. It just I've always never, goes down. I can't think of a game in recent memory that's done that. It's like your likelihood of success, and like it's just an actual statistic on the yeah. screen. You're just like, shit, 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 shit. Yeah, like, and then you're like, oh, cool, 70%, 69%, 68%. Stop uh-oh. It. <laughs> I'm fucking this up. That's even just more ammo when you get to that choice. You have to either hit square triangle and you're just like but it says 10 (laughs) percent. my luck's terrible i don't want yeah i really liked that i love the way it showed you what everybody else shows afterwards and it was like this percentage of your friend did this and this percentage of those are great and i I got to the end and it's like zero percent saved everybody and i'm like what happened and then i asked nick and nick's like i got a great ending for that part and i'm like but you didn't save ever. What was your good ending? Like there, it branched so much, and there were so many. And Kevin didn't do one branch. Glad it shows you the branches too. <laughs> That's what I don't like about some Telltale oh, games. About it. I missed a bunch of one of them. But <laughs> Kevin didn't do one entirely. <laughs> Uh, Telltale games just kind of give you the percentage, and that's about it. But this yeah. one shows you the actual branches. Yeah, of the choices. Everything. Yeah, it was. Re- it was really especially nice going back and seeing like how did four branches come from that? Uh, it was like yeah, I, I didn't pick up the magazine. Like what could have happened what? from that? <laughs> Um, and then on top of that, just really good, memorable characters, uh, sure. whether it's, you know, Hank and Connor doing their thing. I thought Marcus was great. Uh, Cara was in the game. Um, <laughs> like they, there is, there's a lot of really good, the, uh, Tracy's, I believe their names were Chloe. Like there is just a lot of characters that I really, really liked and, uh, just didn't, I really didn't think I was going to like it that much. And I did, um, like it more than beyond two souls and I might like it. More than Heavy Rain. I don't know. I need to go back and play them both again to see, but it's definitely in the conversation for sure. Yeah. And that's a... I want you to experience my playthrough of Detroit because then I think you'll like it more than Heavy Rain. Oh, yeah? And if I had a category for bromance of the year, this game would have won. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I loved every second of that story. So my story is very good. Detroit. Number two, Detroit Become Human. I like the way <laughs> you think. Um. Yeah, this game was awesome. I I've been looking forward to it for a very long time. When did I pre-order this? Like 2015 or 2016? <laughs> Something. Like I pre-ordered that. a long time because I I knew as soon as I saw how it was laid out and that it was the same guys that did Heavy Rain. I was like, I'm gonna like this game. It's got a good setting. Well, not Detroit, but the whole like human robot thing. That's that's a kind of a future Detroit always looks sweet. And yeah, because they always clean this. this shit up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that, that's kind of that's subject matter that I'm I'm fond of like that kind of thing and and it was really well executed, especially if you get to see all three branches because mm-hmm. they are very different. Yeah, um, they all do kind of play differently. The characters. Yeah, one's very Batman. Like they both, they almost reminded me of Batman, but like different aspects of him. Yeah, where like Connor was very investigative. He's and Marcus the detective was very, part. Um, 
Like he was action oriented, but you still I, had to plan I almost plan call him com- combative, but not not quite. Yeah, yeah. And then Kara was there, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then she has a very good story also that could have been its own game. Like they all feel like they could have been their own games, but I think that's what makes it such a good game. That there's three very strong things in it tie together. Yeah, that's really good. And, and there's places. moments where you're like, are they going to go there? Are they going to do what I think? Oh, they're doing it. Oh, know. yeah. Like, I really hope they... No, so don't do that. Oh, he's, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Detroit, a uh, game I need to go through at least once more. Yeah, that's another thing that I want to say. I want to play through it again, which I never want to play through choice-based games again. I, I do This is one I want to do. I'm like, I have to do this again. I want to do, like, another, like, three people, everybody gets one, you know. Because I had, like, the perfect run going Connor. for a little while. <laughs> yeah, I had the perfect run going for a while, and I fucked up one of them real bad. <laughs> I was like, shit. <laughs> but yeah, Detroit, great game. Yeah, if I could vote for best third of a game, uh, would it be like not even uh, subjected to like a yearly thing just of all time? <laughs> Probably would have chosen that. But. Your third is different. What third did you like? Connor and Hank. See, I, I liked great. Marcus the best. Out of all of them. Connor's probably the best. Marcus was the one where it ended a little soon for me. <laughs> 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 no, I, I liked Marcus's a lot, and I thought his would be my least favorite because he's kind of like the he's rebellion kinda thing, and I'm like, oh, not this story. That's he, an he had thing. the best moments, I, I think. It. That was the like cool his thing. March was fucking. That was awesome. the cool thing with the game is that that subject matter is trope heavy, but they managed to avoid a lot of them, so it was cool. Or played it again, or they themselves. used it well, yeah. yeah. Number two, God of War. Uh, lots to say about this game. Favorite uh, historical perspective of using Norse, and this was one you talked about, Detroit. The second they said God of War and Norse mythology, I was like, this game can have my money. Um, I knew I'd love it uh, from the second I turned it on till the time I beat it, which was like 30 hours or something like 20 something. I don't know. It felt fast, whatever Depends it was. Depends on if you tried to fight but Valkyries for, <laughs> for two, <laughs> two hours. hours. And I gave did, up. and I won. <laughs> um, but that's the beauty of a game that doesn't feel like it's broken up uh, because it's just going the whole time. Like I always felt bad saving and turning it off to go to sleep or work or whatever because it was just like, Normally, games like okay, I can stop here. Uh, this major thing just happened, but like the camera's still going. It's like, well, shit, I gotta keep playing. Um, so that was good and bad for me, uh, time wise. It was but, like controlling a movie. Almost. Yeah, uh, it was, yeah, it was like pausing in the middle of a Blu-ray or something. It's just like I don't really know where to stop. But um, really enjoyed the new things that they brought to the game, as far as like customizing weapons and armor and getting the play style of God of War, because it has a bunch now, especially with the stuff that they added to it. Um, There's different ways to play your Kratos. So um, I liked mixing and matching and kind of just dipping my toes into each different one and then finding the one where I felt like really badass crushing through these characters. And obviously, too, there's different points in the stories or worlds where maybe this play style or this weapon makes more sense. Um, but it feels like all of the main arsenal was heavily balanced well uh, as far as the use your axe to open up the door versus use this to pull or use boy to you know, shoot a target. Um, all of that felt really balanced, and it wasn't just like these two things were tacked on and this is the main point of the game um, because I thought boy was just kind of like a tack on for a while, then I started giving him some love uh, with money uh, and then armor and whatever else. And I was like, holy shit, this kid's a You're badass. You're being a good dad. Um, boy, boy's good. Here's good some boy. money, boy. <laughs> Here, go get some candy. Um, but yeah, just everything worked well. Uh, the only knock against it, too, sort of like the Spider-Man thing, is a slow burn. It had to build up, and then I finally liked it. Um, Interesting. It took me a while to get fully on board. I mean story narrative all that i was just like this is amazing from the first second it started um but as far as like really locking in on the controls really finding my groove um it took a long time and i feel like once again playstation gods heard me and i go where's the new game uh new game plus or whatever and then it came out so i think if i played it through like that again it would just be a hundred percent thrill ride from the word go but um Big 
big surprises, big moments for fans of the old game, but it didn't constantly submerge you with that and make you go, you should have played the old one, should have played the old yeah. one, so you can get as much out of it. Um, the big reveals or the big story moments and the big whatever, awesome. Um, just everything about it was really great. And I always like when games take a historical perspective and do something new with it. They didn't just play on the old stuff that's been written for thousands of years and kind of just say, like, you know, basically cash that check and just be like, well, there it is. Like they did their own take on it. And all the representations of the gods and demigods and below were really well done. Um, I like their 2018 uh, perspective on it because when you go that far back, usually gods are like big, 100 foot tall uh, things, sort of like in the old God of War games where you can't really like interact with it or feel much. But when they're human sized, yeah, it's when say, they're way more humanized. Uh, and the, the whole time when you're just like, huh, are you? I think I know who you are. It's like, which God are you? And like, it's really cool when it's like that. Um, much more human like much easier to connect to so just everything um really well made game and it definitely deserved the uh game of the war game of game the of the year. world game of the world <laughs> game of the world uh game <laughs> awards game of the year i Nomination. agree with that completely Title. Yep. um my number two <laughs> god of war the best game of the year probably um i also agree it deserved that award yep. uh to me the thing that this game does is one the camera the entire way there's no camera cuts it's all in engine and it's all beautiful it's in engine stuff looks better than a lot of games cutscenes. it's incredible that they're able to do that but on top of that the pacing they just roller coaster you through like it's nothing mm -hmm. and it works beautifully and perfectly um yeah the twists in the stories like you were talking about the boy mechanics i thought were really really well done um giving him a dedicated button was a super smart idea yeah. and something that i was like that doesn't seem great and then you play it and you're like oh okay and like you said you start leveling him up and it's like oh yeah he's really useful about <laughs> hour 15 or 20 i was like man i fucked up <laughs> i really should have been pressing yeah. that button for boy yeah i didn't <laughs> realize that till about 10 hours in. yeah he's actually he's pretty good so helpful give him some points in his bow and he just kind of does work like uh, on top of that, yeah, the combat to me was my sticking point where I was like, ah, I just don't like the combat. I mess with the controls a bit, button mapped, and I was like, okay, now I'm getting it. And to me, it was the combat, okay, I've seen people do incredible like combos and things, but just that isn't the game to me. To me, that game is exploring and being told these stories when you're on your boat rides. And there's still moments like I can think about them and literally the hair will stand up on my arms because well, three they were, yeah, <laughs> they were so uh, incredible and powerful. And the score really yeah. helped that where, he, you know, Kratos will say something and then it just ramps up and it's like, Doom, no, and I'm like, yeah. oh, no, oh, it's so good. Um, what a great phenomenal Shout game. One out. of the best video games of the generation, like the PlayStation 4 generation, I think easily. Probably. Yeah. With the music and the sound ramping up, especially the, for the big moments that both of us talked about, uh, shout out to bass uh, being a real thing. This game like rocked probably half my house <laughs> at some points. <laughs> yeah, talk about I can rattle windows. This will do it. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, God of War is so good, man. So good. So I'm at number one. You are. Oh yeah, I got one honorable mention. You did yours early, but I usually. Don't uh yeah. Well, my my honorable mentions were things that couldn't be on my list. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, this one would be on my list, but I'm only about two hours into it. Uh, Into the Breach. Um, a really cool RTS game made by the guys that did FTL a few years ago. Um, I like it because it's not just like strictly combat RTS. Like a lot of it, you know what your enemy is going to do ahead of time, so you. You usually do more moving them around than you do actually killing them. So like a lot of your abilities, like I was saying earlier, one of them punches. Well, the punch does damage, but it also moves them a square because it's a grid-based RTS. And sometimes that's more important than actually killing them. You get them out of range of something. Or you can, you can get them out of range of something or put them on a new line of sight to hit their own guys. Like it's, it's oh, very cool. cool. And there's land-based and air-based guys, so there's water. If you knock that land-based guy, they just die immediately. The air guys, they just fly. I don't give a shit, but... I know the game's really cool. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. It plays really well. It's a grid base. What are you playing it on? PC. PC. Basically just a mouse game. Yeah, Into the Breach. Very cool. Uh, my number one, though, is Octopath Traveler. 
Uh, my favorite game to both look at and listen to, probably since P5 last year, because that game's gorgeous, and I love the soundtrack in it. Um, that map is also very well done. I love the eight different paths all start somewhere different. You start kind of central, but different cities, and you just go. It just opens up beautifully. Um, the combat in the game's perfect. It's really good. Like I, I've been wanting a turn-based game for a little bit, and that combat is perfect for that. I love the, um, you were talking about storing up attacks. Yeah. It's a lot like, uh, what's the DS game? Yeah, where you can store attacks like that, but they do it a little better, I think, because it builds on, instead of just being two of the attack, it does different things, usually hits harder and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, the other games, it's like a RPG, lover's RPG, but I heard some people say like, it makes a lot of sense, because it's very classical in the way it operates and plays. Um, I like. Yeah, all it was nice to have an uh, RPG again that like just showed no mercy sometimes. So Some, like, here's the boss you, attack. You didn't defend. Your whole team's dead. Sometimes like, oh, you run okay. into shit and they just fuck you up. Yeah. And you have to kind of regroup yourself. All right, let's try this again without being an idiot. I also really like the like freedom of choice that it gave you with like, okay, I'm going to be, you know, this class, but also I'm going to be this class and you can mix and match your characters yeah, like and the your classes. Classes and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Multi-class. Yeah, the job system or whatever they want to call it is very well done. Um, I, I like that. I think it was Kevin. Uh, you just like skip some of them. I like that you have that option. Yeah, I only played the characters I liked. Yeah, if you want to, you can do that, and it, you don't get punished for it. Other than you just don't have those characters. Yeah, it makes I'm it a, harder. But yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, because you didn't pick any combat characters. <laughs> <laughs> let me take clerics. <laughs> <laughs> let me heal somebody that's not doing anything, and let me get the dancer going. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I like that you have that option because yeah. you can, if you want to try and fight through it like that, you you can. Um, yeah, like, the game's really well done. I loved it. My favorite Switch game, hmm. Octopath. And I want another one like you were saying earlier. Yeah, I think oh, we will. One. Yeah, the game did very well. What number one? What does one. Uh, sixteen path? What would that be? I don't know the uh, Dodeca path. I want sixteen characters. <laughs> All just uh, like this. That game would be long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out or uh, honorable mention, whatever you want to call it. Uh, shout out the Colossus. I think this game would have been number one on my list if I didn't adhere to strict, unnecessary rules. <laughs> but, um, boy, oh boy, what a game! This this made me this almost made the purchase of a 4K TV worth it alone. Ooh, you haven't played in 4K yet? Oh no. Have you played God of War yet? No, oh, I just got the 4K. I played Hellblade. You just got it for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just oh, got. Yeah. I just set it up like two, three days ago. Uh, yeah, I played Hellblade, and I play. I watched um, some TV shows and stuff mm-hmm. to see what it looks like. But I haven't actually played like a native 4K game yet. Ooh, wee! Uh, so beautiful, so beautiful, and I'm just happy for everything they did to that game. Um, I don't know if the videos went live yet. I may have mentioned this in top games of all time list, or at least top Sony games. Um great game and i'm just i'm very happy with what they did to it it made me feel like the way i went through resident evil one when they did that remaster again i was just like oh this is amazing so hope i get that feeling um around the same time of year for 2019 as i did wasn't that like a february game it's february yeah. yeah so once resident evil 2 remake comes out hoping i'm getting the same vibes but um so excited number one octopath traveler uh on top of everything kellen said uh, I will address the big ne- knock against the game that nothing intersects really or intertwines and it's all, it's like a bunch of eight or eight different stories and they just kind of end. Um, those people need to get the good ending and play the epilogue and that's it. Um, on top <laughs> of all that, uh, I just really loved all the characters. Uh, like you mentioned, multi-classing, secondary jobs, vocations, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it was really nice to be like, okay, well, here's this archetype that I can't change because he's a he's a big muscly man and this is a cleric looking lady, but I can cover their weaknesses by giving him, you know, maybe some healing, giving her a little bit of extra oomph when she hits or something like that. Um, and it was cool for me because I you obviously start with a character, but that that just means like you just have to use them the entire game. It's not really like a another type of game where like I mentioned for Assassin's Creed where if you don't choose the dude well he's the dude in the game and uh, he shows up every now and then like this one you get to choose 
three out of your four at all times. Um, so that was really cool. I liked everyone having a starting city and a reason to go out and then do their own thing. And it wasn't anything that was the world's ending, I got to do this, because that's always the silly part about sandbox games or big adventure games is you always see the big bad and then this lady needs help with her chickens and you're just like, uh, <laughs> I can't really reason my way out of this one. Um, this doesn't feel important. Yeah, like some people... I mean, even the merchant story, just her getting out was just like, I just want to see the world. That's it. I just want to travel. And it was, it was really it's cool not bad. It's my favorite. to have you only just like very just like grounded stories that aren't just like, I'm going to go assassinate the big man or something. It was just like, this guy pissed me off. Um, I need to redeem my past. I need to see the world. I want to heal people. Like, just very, just normal things. I'm like, okay, I'm on board. I can understand this. You don't need a long codex or a long narration or in the year. No blah, falsy blah, blah, blah. enemy of cocoon Final Fantasy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's just, <laughs> hey, I'm bored of this place. I want to go do something and help people. It's like, deal. Cool. Let's go. Um, graphics are amazing. I really love the storybook aspect of it, especially in dungeons. Um, sort of the same idea as Astrobot, where uh, you can walk past something and something can be hidden in your like peripheral. Mm -hmm. But you'll turn around, oh, there it is. Uh, obviously not VR for this, but when you're going through dungeons and you take maybe like this path, uh, it starts to move a little bit and you can kind of see behind that big rock or something that was hiding in your way. So it's really cool and really natural for them to hide. Yeah, it's like a play, yeah. like a stage or something. Yeah, it's um, clearly staged like that. Stuff so right. even though I just talked about God of War being awesome and the fact that it was just like, it's a roller coaster, you're just constantly on it and you can't, you know, you can't get off. Uh, this one was nice because it was very sliced up and it was very much like a storybook where you're like, ah, I, I completed that chapter. I feel really good about myself. I'll come back to this. And I think um, it, Maybe aside from Pokemon, because uh, that game came out pretty late in the year, but this game probably competes for a lot of like hardcore Switch owners. Um, like, I don't really know what to call it, but like going to a game and just really pacing it slowly throughout the year, like just going back, I'll play 30 minutes, going back, I'll play another 30 minutes. Uh, you can chop it up very easily and not feel like, what was I doing? Like, that. that's part of the grounded story is that it's just pretty simple as far as what your main quest is. Who was I going to go talk to? It's very simple to find stuff, um, even though the maps are pretty big. And just everything works out well. I will say the map system is a little mm, difficult uh, to navigate if you're just like, which road did I need to take? But, um, you know, that's, that's Japanese games for you, really. Uh, that's the difference between, I mean, even God of War, uh, some of these other games, too, you had a pretty difficult menu if you're looking at the map and just used to planning a waypoint and then just walking right to it um maybe this isn't the game for you then <laughs> or god of war but um aside from that little knock uh just start to finish that's the way that's how i determine what my number one was spider-man uh red dead god of war all these other games like i just had chunks of time whether it was a couple hours a lot of hours or just continuous uh, there was just a frustration point. Um, Spider-Man and God of War was just, I just didn't feel powerful enough. I've been Spider-Man eight years, yet, you know, these thugs on the street kick my ass. Or <laughs> I am the God of War, um, and I just, I feel puny, uh, not able to do stuff. But this one, start to finish, on board the whole way. Um, just everything that you want in RPG. As far as cool weapons, cool unlocks, um, and just cool rewards for completing stuff. And like I said, it was nice for everything to end and culminate and really feel like you got a true ending. Because I feel like that's maybe what Japanese games brought um, with them. Is like there's there's always an ending. There's a bad ending, a good ending, whatever. There's like an end of the game. But so there's this little, little bit extra where if you really put that... 120 or 130 hours in and really just like hit every corner you know found everything and did everything correct then uh you get your true ending and sure enough got it um just loved it uh, start to finish so that's my number one game of the year interesting uh my number one 
way more personal, uh, Tetris Effect. I knew I would like this game. I knew I would love this game, but I didn't realize how much I was going to love this game. I might have played the demo of this game more than 90% of my list. Um, They put out a demo with three songs on it, and I just kept going through and going through and listening to the songs and playing through that playing through those games and getting a higher score, comparing it to my friends, all my friends' lists, and being like, ah, I'm so much better at this than you. This is great. Validation. Uh, (laughs) Anyway, this game came out at a time where I didn't really feel like playing games. There was a solid, like, month where I was just like, I don't really want to play anything. I didn't even want to play Fortnite, and that's saying something. Um, But VR is a wonderful thing where you go into your own little world, you listen to this amazing like trance soundtrack. It really gets grooving. And in the VR space, it is absolutely incredible. The effects, every time you clear a line, the effects are blasting all around you. It's a little distracting. You're like, whoa, this is cool. Oh, I'm losing. Um, but the, the effects are blasting all around you. Everything's in sync to the music, which is new for Tetris. Usually Tetris is you start at one. And it gets faster and faster and faster until it's too fast. You can't keep up and you lose. With this one, instead, it falls to the beat of the music, which I thought was really awesome. So if it has a slow chorus, the music might be going fast and then hit the chorus and slow down and kind of give you a chance to breathe. And then it ramps back up. Um, absolutely incredible. All the I think every song in the game is awesome. I love the fact that they themed all of the Tetris pieces and the effects going on to each song. I love their online community that they have like unlockable songs and things that you can do as challenges and stuff like that. The VR mode obviously is a huge plus, but also I did play it in the 4K HDR and oh, it it is beautiful. I told you. It is beautiful. It's one game that's got like an alternate mode basically like VR where it's 50-50 down the middle for me. Um, I can whip out my pros and cons or whatever when people say, which one should I play? I'm like, "Uh, do you have a 4K TV? Yeah then it gets tough but if it's just you know standard whatever then obviously play a vr you get the you get over obstacles easier uh, like on-screen obstacles that you might not get through just watching basic yeah the, the game was 2D. made was made for vr yeah. like very clearly but um man it's pretty either way yeah the like i prefer the vr still but it is nice just to show people the game in the in the hdr it's absolutely incredible but yeah like i said i just didn't feel like playing many games during that time and tetris was the one that did it um, and I knew I would like it. I, I like Res and I like Luminous. You know, I, I like the past works. But um, Tetris Effect's on another level. Absolutely another level. And I really hope that they... I mean, I, I don't think we'll see a Tetris Effect 2, but I would love an expansion or something like that. Puyo, that, Puyo, te- or, uh, Tetris. Puyo, Puyo Effect. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would Good love God. some sort of expansion that has like six new songs or something along those lines. All the music was made for the game. It's not like... He went and found, you know, songs yeah. that would fit and then made that like this was all made intentionally. Some of the songs run into each other that you find out like later on towards the end of the song. It's like that's the beginning of this other song. Um, and yeah, just an absolute sensory overload. It puts you like two things that do that. I don't know what it's called. I forget what it's called. But there is a moment where the challenge of difficulty is exactly challenging but passable Mm -hmm. and when you hit that rhythm you go like go into a trance basically and that's what you're like yeah yeah, i mean that's like like what it unlocks i forget what the name of what it's called is though but you're basically in this mode where the challenge is exactly proportional to like the skill that you have Mm -hmm. and you're you're just barely getting by but it feels so good and nothing can distract you and you have that in tetris but the other thing that does that to you is music like music puts you in that that feeling too and they just put those two together into a nice sandwich and fed it to me and it was so delicious i I absolutely uh, loved it tetris effect my game of the year i was there when they debuted the trailer for it and i'm pretty sure when you got home since then until the demo came out you had that um i forget the actual name of the song but connected uh, yeah, you had yeah. that on loop. I, I love it. I life. still listen to it every day. <laughs> I absolutely love that song. And then uh, there's another song that's um, Always Been But Never Known, I think it's called. And that's like the like last song. Yeah. Once again, yeah. it's a sandwich. It's a real good sandwich, guys. 
Um, but those two songs are so incredible, and so is everything in between. Love that game. Fair enough. So that is my the game of the year. And I actually really want them to put it on Switch. I think that'd be a good um, Switch game. Have some headphones, be on the plane, play some Tetris. I'd enjoy that. Or you can play Game of the Year, Octopath Traveler, <laughs> on the Switch. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I, I knew you were, I assumed you were going to have Octopath as your number one. I wasn't sure about you. I didn't know if you were going to have Detroit or, or where you were going to go. It was a good fight. <laughs> a good fight. Because I love Detroit. It, it was an eight versus three, and they just didn't stand a chance. Exactly. Detroit's <laughs> one of those where I said, I'm glad I didn't do more than five, because it's it's knocking on five's door. And like I said, there are days of the week where I'm just like, Connor, Hank. Oh, yeah, that's number five. And then other days where I'm, you know, yeah. I'm thinking about something else. That's how I, I was like, there's moments where I'm like, Detroit, I like a lot of Detroit better than I liked God of War. But then I'm like, also, I think God of War is like going to push the medium of video games mm. forward. Like a lot of people are going to copy a lot of stuff God of War did oh, and yeah. try and do that. And I'm like, well, that's got to be worth something, too. So that's it's hard. It's a debate. Points, it's yeah. all made up. We're just saying stuff. I, mean, I like Tetris. <laughs> Whatever. Kevin likes Tetris. <laughs> Tetris game of the year. Um, so please, in the comments down below, let us know what your list or your favorite game of the year was. Thank you for being here, Kellen. Yeah. Thank you for being here, Nick. Oh, yeah. And thank you guys so much for watching. We will speak with you next time.